Hello and welcome to Noel's RetroLab Nibble Edition. Today I'm going to show you how to make a very quick adapter that forces the Amstrad CPC 6128 to use the upper memory bank as the default 64K. A few days ago I was restoring an Amstrad CPC 6128. Everything seemed to be working, so I just had to give it a good cleaning. I ran some tests to make sure that everything was working and they seemed to pass just fine. Then I ran CPM and this is what happened. Weird. Then I remember that CPM uses the full 128K of RAM, but all the other games I had tested so far only used 64K, which is pretty normal in the Amstrad. So I loaded another game that I knew used 128K of RAM and... Yep, we definitely have a problem with the second 64K bank of RAM here. Let's have a quick look at how the memory banks work on the Amstrad CPC 6128. The Z80 can address only 64 kilobytes at the time, which is 16 bits of address space. By default, those 64K are the lower bank of the Amstrad. The second bank of 64K can be broken down into four blocks of 16 kilobytes each. The Amstrad can map any of those blocks in the addressing space between 4000 and 8000. So programs can map different blocks at different times to make use of more than 64K of RAM. The chip in charge of controlling the memory mapping in the different blocks is the HAL, which is a type of PAL or Programmable Logic Array. On the Amstrad, we already have a pretty primitive memory test that runs from RAM. I'm putting a link in the description. It actually works great, but it only looks at the lower 64K of RAM. One of my pending projects is to write a good comprehensive memory test, kind of like ZX Diagnostics for the ZX Spectrum. But in the meanwhile, there's a cool trick we can use that I first read about in CPC Wiki. The HAL logic is so simple that we could actually remove it, make a few bridges straight on the socket and force the Amstrad to use the whole second bank as the 64K for the Z80. At that point, we can run the regular memory test and catch any problems. And to make things easier, the HAL is actually socketed in all 6128 models. I have no idea why. So that's quite convenient. The only problem is that it's a bit fiddly making those connections, getting the right pins, and cutting the right cables to the right length. But it turns out that Bryce from CPC Wiki had the bright idea to actually making those connections on a 20 pin socket and soldering them there permanently. That way, whenever you want to force the upper bank, you just remove the hell, insert the modded socket, and you're done. So having this 6128 with a faulty upper RAM was just the excuse I needed to finally build that adapter. Now we could solder it directly here, but these kind of sockets are not ideal for that because of all the plastic that they have around. It's much better to have the round pin sockets and I don't have any. So what I'm gonna try to do is use some of these strips of pins and put them here and then do the soldering directly on those. I'm gonna set it on this breadboard to make it easier to push on the socket without damaging the legs. And there you go, all the bridges are made and this looks pretty sturdy. So let's test it out. Okay, let's open it up. And there's the hell. That's the one we need to replace. So we carefully remove the helm and we put in our new adapter. Now that the upper bank is mapped as the lower bank, I'm going to run the regular memory test and I expect to see an error. Those colors in the border mean that some chips are fine in green color and there is one in particular that is faulty and that one is marked in red. Since the red band is the third from the bottom, that means the faulty one is the chip corresponding to bit number two. 
So here's the board, and here's the memory, the 128K of RAM. So it's not exactly intuitive, but the lower bank, the, the main 64K of RAM, are actually those on the right with the higher IC number. That seems to make no sense, but that's the way it is. So this is the um, second bank, and that's the one that we're forcing the computer to use as the lower bank because of our adapter here. Out of these, we know that bit 012 is failing and the start from the top. So zero, this is bit 012. So it's IC121, the one that we need to desolder and replace. And now we put in a new memory. And let's test it. If all goes well now, we should see the green bars on the side of the screen. And yeah, perfect. It looks like all the memories are good. So now I removed the adapter and put the HAL back in place, and I'm trying to load CPM again. Perfect, it loads without a problem. And let's try that game again. Awesome, I think all the memory is working correctly now. And that's that. It was super simple and it's definitely something very handy to have if you find yourself doing any kind of repairs on an Amstrad CPC 6128. So I'm saving it in my toolbox for future use. I hope you enjoyed that video. If so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Until next video, see you then.